The European Organization for Nuclear Research, better known as CERN, has recently done what no one thought to be possible. With the help of the Large Hadron Collider, better known as the LHC, they have managed to study the particles that existed just moments after the Big Bang. However, with this discovery, an event has occurred that may just affect every single one of us. CERN is a leading scientific research institute dedicated to exploring the fundamental properties of the universe. At its heart lies the LHC, the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Spanning a 17-mile underground loop, the LHC is designed to propel particles to nearly the speed of light before smashing them together. These high-energy collisions give birth to a wide range of particles, some of which are incredibly rare and short-lived, offering scientists a glimpse into the unseen constituents of our universe. The LHC is renowned for its groundbreaking experiments, particularly those related to particle collisions. By observing the aftermath of these collisions, researchers can identify new particles and understand more about their properties and behaviors. One of the most significant achievements of the LHC was the discovery of the elusive Higgs boson, also known as the God particle. The Higgs boson, proposed by physicist Peter Higgs in the 1960s, was of paramount interest because it was believed to fill up other particles with mass. Therefore, scientists concluded that each particle in the universe contained the Higgs boson, and we have just discovered it. This groundbreaking finding reinforced the theory that particles acquire mass by interacting with the Higgs field, a ubiquitous energy field associated with the Higgs boson. Thus, this particle serves as an essential cornerstone in our current understanding of the universe, its origins, and the fundamental laws governing its evolution. In an unparalleled scientific endeavor, CERN decided to increase the energy output of the LHC in late 2022. This decision was driven by a desire to reach higher energy states, enabling the observation of more exotic theoretical particles that may further help us understand the nature of our universe. With this increase, the LHC was expected to collide particles at an unprecedented 14 tera electron volts, a significant leap from its previous operational energy levels. To put that into perspective, if your car has a maximum speed of 200 kilometers per hour, increasing the energy output by this amount would allow for your car to have a maximum speed of 800 kilometers per hour. The scientific community reacted to this development with a mix of anticipation and concern. While many saw it as an ambitious stride towards expanding our understanding of particle physics, others warned of potential unforeseen consequences that could arise from such high-energy experiments. On the same day as scientists turned up the energy output on the LHC, a crack or a weak spot formed in the Earth's magnetic field. This magnetic field, our planet's natural shield against harmful solar radiation, underwent a noticeable alteration. This phenomenon is not entirely unheard of, but nonetheless alarming due to its unusually large size and timing. The magnetic field, created by the swirling of molten iron within Earth's outer core, is crucial for preserving life on our planet. The crack, extending over a large region, allowed more solar particles to enter Earth's atmosphere, leading to intensified auroras and potential disruptions to satellite communication systems. Intriguingly, this magnetic anomaly coincided with the LHC's increased energy output. This led to a surge of speculation linking the two events, suggesting that the high energy collisions within the LHC may have somehow influenced Earth's magnetic field. Critics argue that the Earth's magnetic field, being influenced by global scale geodynamic processes, is far beyond the influence of human activity, let alone a single scientific experiment. Given our current understanding of physics, the LHC's energy output is minuscule compared to the enormous energies involved in Earth's geodynamic systems. Therefore, while the connection makes for an intriguing conjecture, it's widely considered unlikely within the scientific community. With the recent events at CERN, many theories arose, and among the most controversial of them was the hypothesis that CERN was attempting to open a portal to another dimension. Proponents of this idea suggested that the increased energy levels could theoretically create tiny black holes or wormholes that might act as bridges to alternate dimensions. 
The science behind these theories, however, remains largely speculative and not supported by mainstream physics. There are still many that believe CERN is doing more than just launching particles at each other. When the crack appeared, it created a weak spot in our planet's shield, allowing for more solar wind to penetrate into Earth's atmosphere. Solar winds are a stream of charged particles constantly injected from the sun. Generated by the sun's intense heat, these particles speed away, carrying with them the sun's magnetic field. On reaching Earth, they primarily interact with our planet's magnetic field. This interaction creates a buffer, known as the magnetosphere, which deflects the majority of the solar wind away, preventing it from directly reaching our planet's atmosphere. As solar winds carry a significant amount of energy, an increased influx could have several impacts. The immediate and most visible effect would be an intensification of auroras, the northern and southern lights, caused by the interaction of solar particles with atmospheric gases. More concerning, however, is the potential for solar winds to disrupt satellite communications and navigation systems, as the increased influx of charged particles can interfere with the electronic systems of satellites. Furthermore, prolonged exposure to intense solar wind could gradually erode the atmosphere, although over very long geological timescales. While our understanding of these effects is continually evolving, scientists have had some time to study some of these major effects. The Sun also produces a spectacle by the name of solar flares. You might think that these are similar to the solar winds we just talked about. However, the two have their major differences. Solar flares are massive eruptions of electromagnetic radiation from the Sun's surface, usually associated with sunspots, areas of intense magnetic activity. Solar flares occur when the stored magnetic energy in these sunspots is suddenly released, blasting out a torrent of high-energy particles. In essence, solar flares are explosive events that release a significant amount of energy in a short period of time, while solar wind is a steady flow of particles that constantly emanates from the sun. Solar flares are classified into three types, C, M, and X, with X-class flares being the most powerful and capable of causing significant disruptions to our planet's magnetosphere. Associated with these flares are coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, huge bubbles of gas threaded with magnetic field lines that are ejected from the sun over several hours. If Earth is in the path of a CME, these charged particles can interact with our planet's magnetic field, causing a geomagnetic storm. These storms can lead to beautiful displays of auroras, but they can also cause disruptions in satellite communications, power grids, and radio communications, as do solar winds. Over the past year, there's been a significant increase in solar activity including several powerful solar flares. This is because of a natural phenomenon known as the solar maximum. The sun follows an 11-year cycle of solar activity, ranging from a solar minimum, with fewer sunspots and less solar activity, to a solar maximum, with an increased number of sunspots and heightened solar activity. We're currently in a phase approaching the solar maximum, which explains the recent surge in solar activity. This heightened solar activity combined with a pre-existing crack in the Earth's magnetic field, created a unique situation. Normally, our planet's magnetic field acts as a shield, redirecting the solar wind and the charged particles of solar flares and CMEs around the Earth. But the crack in the magnetic field allowed a larger-than-usual amount of these charged particles to enter the Earth's atmosphere. Over the longer term, increased exposure to solar particles could have implications for atmospheric chemistry and climate although scientists are still studying these potential effects. This increased penetration of solar particles has led to a series of effects. The biggest event that the world is talking about is the possibility of an upcoming internet apocalypse that NASA has warned of. This catastrophic scenario could leave people without internet access for months or even years and can take effect any time now. The high energy particles produced by these phenomena can infiltrate our planet's magnetosphere and induce currents in the Earth's crust. This geomagnetically induced current can surge through our wired infrastructure, causing extensive damage to transformers and other components of the electrical grid. A part of this grid is our internet infrastructure, with its vast network of undersea cables, data centers, and satellites, all potentially susceptible to such surges. Solar storm-induced currents can overload and damage undersea cables that handle 99% of the world's internet traffic, 
Furthermore, they could disrupt satellite communications, impairing GPS systems and satellite-based internet services. In a worst-case scenario, a powerful solar storm could cause a widespread and prolonged internet blackout, leaving vast regions of the globe digitally isolated for an extended period. NASA is currently attempting to stop this event from taking place. In its mission to understand the celestial bodies in our solar system, NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe in 2018 to study the Sun up close. The spacecraft, named after astrophysicist Eugene Parker, is tasked with the mission of touching the Sun, as they have stated. It is designed to fly through the Sun's corona, the outer atmosphere, where it can observe phenomena like solar flares and solar winds directly. Equipped with a suite of scientific instruments, the probe gathers vital data about the Sun's magnetic field, plasma and energetic particles, and the solar wind. The probe has been performing repeated close encounters with the Sun, providing unprecedented data about our star's activity, which will help improve our understanding of how solar winds are accelerated and how solar energy is dispersed into space. With the data from this probe and other space weather monitoring spacecraft, NASA is working on strategies to mitigate the potential threats posed by solar storms. By understanding the sun's behavior and solar wind patterns better, scientists hope to improve space weather forecasts. The ability to predict significant solar storms more accurately will provide valuable lead time to take protective measures for the electrical grid, satellite networks, and internet infrastructure, thus mitigating the effects of a potential internet apocalypse. One such protective measure could be to put satellites in safe mode during an unexpected solar storm, thereby reducing the risk of damage. Similarly, power companies could be warned to adjust their load on the grid in anticipation of the geomagnetically induced currents. While these measures might not eliminate all risks associated with a powerful solar storm, they represent critical steps in our preparedness to face such potentially disruptive events. If you enjoyed this video, Please let us know in the comments.